Remember that you are already awakened. All you need to do is to realize it, to notice it, and act accordingly. Awakening is to realize the infinite value of your life every moment and uh, the infinite value of lives of other beings and then other uh, non-living things. And then uh, you realize that and then you act accordingly and then I wish you well. My name is Kazuaki Tanahashi. I am um, an artist. I'm a um, Buddhist scholar. I'm a writer. And I do uh, peace and environmental work. I think uh, we all have uh, ourselves and then uh, we have our body um, uh, we have our body and then our mind and heart and positions families uh, and then uh, it's important that we realize that we have a self and then we have boundaries and then to keep the boundaries uh, in our social uh, life um, and then, um, but uh, also uh, we are only focusing on ourselves. We become self-centered and then we become uh, greedy. So uh, if we realize that uh, also other peoples have uh, their own selves and their own boundaries and then their own values, and then realize that, realizing that uh, uh, each one of us is a humble part of the entire life, large kind of universal self. And then uh, we uh, realize that uh, we should be uh, not greedy, but more like a, a giving. I think the spiritual practice can be a base of uh, your life. Um, you can be, uh, by uh, engaging in meditation practice, uh, you can be uh, calm, relaxed, and then being thoughtful and being in touch with deeper part of yourself. So that can be a, a very good base for the happy and useful and serving life. I think um, enlightenment is awakening. And awakening is to realize the infinite value of each moment of your life. And then each, and also the infinite value of other people's lives. Not only uh, living beings, but uh, all uh, things existing. So that is, uh, awakening and uh, I think uh, in many ways we can uh, become closer and closer to experience this. This can be the basis of uh, our life and our action. So the Buddha's teaching Prajna Paramita um, is uh, realizing wisdom beyond wisdom. So
So that is uh, the realization that uh, uh, nothing is uh, separate from each other. So uh, we are all connected and we are all one. So if we have this uh, uh, wisdom beyond wisdom, prajna, then uh, also we have uh, compassion with others because we are not separate. So we hurt others. Uh, if we hurt others, um, we hurt ourselves. And if we are kind, loving to others, we are kind and loving to ourselves. It may be good to have some kind of regular uh, schedule, maybe to uh, meditate at a certain time of the day or certain length, uh, to go to kind of, uh, the teachers' uh, talks and teachings and uh, participate in retreats. So, of course, uh, not many people can do um, all that. But I think if you are fortunate enough, maybe you could find a way uh, to uh, do this practice. I think it's um, very good to have an, an um, authentic teacher, yes. Uh, not everyone is fortunate enough, but uh, if you are fortunate enough to uh, look for and then encounter a good teacher, that would be wonderful. A genuine spiritual teacher um, I think you can recognize it. The uh, sincerity, and the, uh, helpfulness, then deep understanding and being ethical. Well, par paradox and contradictions are part of our life, you know. I mean, uh, uh, it's not that kind of one thing is correct and one thing is absolute, and then the other thing is uh, wrong and then uh, worthless. Uh, often uh, there are two aspects and then they contradict with each other. So we should really peace with the fact that uh, life is full of contradictions and then how to kind of uh, deal with these contradictions and then uh, make peace and then enjoy uh, contradictions. Your idea and my idea are different. And then how do we and work together and enjoy the uh, difference and then also diff enjoy the uh, commonality of our ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, practice of beyond thinking does not mean uh, not, not thinking. Oh, you know, our um, physical body, our brains, uh, keeps working, and then we are always thinking. So um, it's possible not to think, try, but the non-thinking is uh, different. Non-thinking is not to be stuck with thinking, you know, and then uh, kind of uh, letting the, the maybe movie of our own stories going on and on. So that is thinking, but uh, maybe become free from thinking. So uh, whenever we uh, 
realize that we are starting making some theme, making some schemes or kind of making plans or uh, trying to understand something. And then we realize that maybe we should uh, become free from that, uh, let go of this thinking. So uh, uh, that is uh, beyond thinking. If we are kind of, uh, if we remain self-centered and we think, you know, I should be important and then I should not be kind of put down and then uh, when people criticize you and then, you know, you're wrong, you are stupid and then you get really upset. You become unhappy, and you strike back, and then the other side will strike back, and then it starts a battle, and then life becomes uh, stressful. And then uh, if you uh, kind of accept, yeah, sure. Uh, like one, one time my uh, son, when he was 10 years old, dad, you are stupid. Well, it's, you know, if your child said uh, you are stupid, it's pretty, uh, pretty bad. <laughs> and then you could uh, be, what do you mean, you know? You, but uh, I said, uh, didn't you know that? And we laughed and then that's it. <laughs> so, uh, just maybe making fun of ourselves is the uh, funniest things we can do, right? And then from, we, can, we can start from that, enjoy kind of the stupidity of human beings. <laughs> Celebrate. <laughs> One, uh, in my book, Brush Mind, I said, to be thoroughly lazy is a tough job, but somebody has to do it. Industrious people build industry. Lazy people build civilization. So it's a big excuse for me to be lazy. <laughs> so um, I think uh, Maybe there are two types of laziness. One is you are not responsible, you are not doing things you, you are supposed to do. That's kind of one laziness. Another is maybe many of us uh, work too hard, you know, and uh, maybe we are over accomplished maybe overworked and then over exhausted. So the whole society is majority of the people are working too hard. So, the, uh, so we become sick, you know, sometimes we get a headache or different uh, signs and then we uh, take a Pain, um, painkillers, and then sort of, and then uh, then we get a headache, and then we uh, make a strong uh, painkiller, and so forth. So the body is sending a signal that you should slow down, and then you should listen to the body. Otherwise, uh, all of a sudden, something very bad happened: cancer or uh, any kind of heart attack or uh, stroke or bad things happen, you sort of ignore the uh, uh, signals and they keep on going and then you explode. So the whole society is like that. You know, we should slow down, we know that, and then we don't do that, and then sort of the whole maybe uh, society and whole human race will explode. 
So it's very important to uh, slow down. People who uh, practice, who, people who meditate, know the value of slowing down. You know, meditation, when we're meditating, we, don't, we can't do anything else. You know, we can't uh, uh, engage in the business or uh, fighting or anything like that. So um, we, uh, we slow down during the meditation time. So that is uh, crucial for the well-being of uh, our individuals and also for the society. Well, one obvious time is uh, clock time. And then um, another time is, yeah, um, inner time. And um, maybe uh, if we enjoy at a certain moment, more fully, we can actually expand the time, right? And we, when we meditate deeper, then we can expand the time to the point that uh, uh, there is no separation between a second or a minute and uh, timelessness, eternity. So in a way, uh, we can experience eternity, kind of uh, complete serenity, um, anytime. De-aging is a word I coined. Some other people may have done that because it's such a simple word. But the notion that uh, uh, we age all the time, every, every, every day we age, that's true, right? Calendar age. And, uh, but uh, our biological age is different, you know? Our body, mind, and heart. Um, we age and de-age at the same time. Some part, some part of our body wears out, and maybe uh, it does not get uh, sort of younger. But a lot of our, uh, a lot of the parts of our body are revitalized. You know, as new cells are born, you know, replacing old cells. And uh, when we sleep, and then we, and then wake up. We are revitalized. We are some part of our body are younger. And then, um, when by uh, so we, I think each moment we have a choice of doing something that makes us younger, or that makes us older. If you say, "Oh, I'm too busy. I, I can't." Uh, grow food, I can't cook. Maybe I should go to uh, get some bite, go to a fast food restaurant. You age very quickly, I guarantee you. And if you say, okay, maybe we should grow food, cook, invite friends, and have a good time. Take time, and then have a good time. Then we become revitalized. So each moment we have a choice of uh, doing something that is uh, harmful for our body or something that uh, makes us young. So that's uh, the aging. And of course, you know, if we, you are more loving and then more excited about your work, you know, this is keeps you young, right? Nobody likes to die or other people to die. 
So we have a tendency to avoid the issue. We don't talk about it, it's a taboo and so forth. But uh, the more we avoid, the more problems happen. And then if we face the fact that we are all kind of destined to die, and then we don't know when we die. It could be, you know, uh, very quickly, you know, or maybe uh, it may take some time, but uh, it doesn't matter if you're young or old. We are all kind of uh, facing this anytime. We don't know when it comes. So why don't we kind of look into it and then really uh, contemplate on that and then uh, find a way to deal with that. So first of all, maybe uh, if we, uh, this is a very faithful companion, you know, always this is uh, on our side and then never goes away. Your partner or lover or wife or husband may say, you are free now, you can go. <laughs> but this, never says that. And uh, so why don't we think about this as the most beautiful companion? Oh, this, you know, I, I, I like to be always with you. You know, you are just, you don't, uh, sort of, you don't go away from me anyway, so I like to be with you. And uh, I like to enjoy your company, you know. So seeing death as the most beautiful com companion is one way to deal with uh, this. And then um, based on that, how we live, you know. Okay, we don't know how long we live, so we need to live fully each moment. So uh, that's the idea. And then what I have been uh, doing with uh, many hospices in different countries is train volunteers or clinicians like uh, social workers, nurses, and doctors to do this uh, work, what I call uh, circle of life. So ask the person who is facing death, ask ourselves too. Uh, the phrase, reminder, Okay, what kind of things I like to say, very something short, repeat myself when I, I face difficulties or death. You know, breathe and smile. That's a very nice way to shape our consciousness when we are facing death. Or I like to be loving, grateful. That's one. Or maybe if you are Christian, you could say maybe, Jesus my joy, you know. This is a great music by Bach. Uh, so, uh, Jesus my joy is a wonderful way to die, you know. And then, you know, if you are like a Buddhist, maybe mantra, Gati, gati, or any kind of mantra. Swaha is nice, you know, joy, blessing, you know, ecstasy, swaha. So uh, this is how to uh, shape our consciousness. We combine it with a circle, kind of, uh, uh, we use a, um, oil pastel on paper and then do like uh, seven circles. And the first one is crushed and the second one is crushed, but it becomes nice. And then use another seven circles uh, overlapping with another color and then another color, three colors. So it will look like a donut. But uh, even if uh, people are sitting, lying in bed, very close to dying, they can do that too. 
and then we look at the, the image and we may forget the words, but it sort of reminds us just the joy of this uh, uh, various colors and then the wonderful shape for the time of dying. I think it would be nice to have music too. Remember that you are already awakened. All you need to do is to realize it, to notice it, and act accordingly. Awakening is to realize the infinite value of your life every moment, and uh, the infinite value of lives of other beings, and then other uh, non-living things. And then uh, you realize that, and then you act accordingly, and then I wish you well. Well, I'd like to invite, uh, thank you all the crew and thank you uh, Fabio for uh, inviting me and then uh, organizing a lot of things uh, um, for me in uh, activities in Brazil, all the colleagues, you know, thank you. And I'd like to thank uh, Reverend Lama Santen for inviting me to Brazil and my deep appreciations. <laughs>